previously on Car Trek. Auto Tempest sent us to get tested on a real racetrack. <laughs> ah. Oh, gearbox fault. Holy cow. How broken is your car? All the faults that it has, it is informing me of. Keep going, Maserati, keep going. Yes! Car. It's a race car, I told you. Our depreciated supercars had not enjoyed their track testing in the brutal Las Vegas heat. Freddy's Maserati even decided to add some more to the record temperatures by catching itself on fire. We towed it back to the rental house so Freddy could learn just how catastrophic that damage had been. Today, Auto Tempest has challenged us to find out what the general public think about our supercars. Clearly, they're not good at going around a track. They're not valuable anymore but can they still impress people? So today we're out to the streets of Las Vegas to find out which of our cars is the best. But Freddie, I don't think you're necessarily up for that. My car was a little too good on the track. It wasn't as good on the highway. There was a very small fire that turned big. Much bigger. It was of the electrical variety. That's my favorite kind of fire. Yeah. a lot of smoke it was bad okay well then we should probably still do what auto tempest wants us to do otherwise we might get punished and i think a great way to tell which of our cars is better obviously mine is for us to find out which one would generate the most revenue as an exotic rental car yeah all right let's go you good, good luck, luck freddy we'll see you soon um i i can't get this car off the trailer can you help Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems about like us. Did it not occur to you to help? No. <laughs> no. Not, at <laughs> not at all. Good. Very, very gentle. Gentle? Very, go, very go, go. Ah! Ah! Okay. Goodness gracious. From this angle, your uh, mirrors look worse. After leaving Freddy to wrench on his hopeless Maserati, Tyler and I brought our cars to Royalty Exotics, a rental car company with some of the most exciting cars in the world, a business I knew all too well. In 2006, I took everything I had, about $20,000, and used it as a down payment on a Lamborghini Gallardo. And I started from my dorm room in college, an exotic car rental company. Now, over time, I added more cars, got some Ferraris and things like that. But I learned that the two things that absolutely cripple an exotic car rental company business model are depreciation and maintenance costs, two things that both of our cars are rather known to be miserable at. That's why we're here at Houston Crosta's Royalty Exotic Cars, so that we could have an expert tell us exactly which one is better. Houston, how are you? I'm really good, guys. Nice Thank to be you here. so much, okay. absolutely. So, we have two amazing cars here in our Find the Most Appreciated Supercar You Can Challenge. And we're here to ask you which one would rent best. And obviously, it'll be my 2003 Aston Martin Vanquish. What could look better as you drive down the strip and uh, certainly everybody will approve. Can we see the next option? <laughs> That's what I thought. 2005 Mercedes CL65 AMG, which is a really cool car. I know Mercedes isn't the biggest brand cachet ever, but 600 horsepower, 700 plus pound feet of torque, really comfortable. You got a really tall guy that can fit in here, cruise the strip. Why don't we do a challenge based on my opinion? Whoever wins gets to drive a, an Aventador. Yeah. And whoever loses gets to drive the slingshot I just pulled out of the impound. Slingshot may or may not start, but we'll, we'll work on that next. 
For Aston Martin, the good things that this car has going for it is the, the brand equity. It's the 007, James Bond, beautiful. It's a vanquish. Aston Martin call it the vanquish, we call it the vanish. Oh, very good. But does it start? Because we don't know every time you turn the car on if it's going to turn on. The seats, the buttons, do any of these features actually work on the car? You know, it's a coin toss there. How about air conditioning? Uh, no, at the moment it does not work. Okay, so we're gonna have to tell the person that comes in to rent this car has no air conditioning. So that's gonna be problem number one. I thought I was really in trouble with this, but now I'm feeling pretty good because everything works on the CL. It drives perfectly, cold air, no, no problems at all. The issue at the CL is it's not convertible. Now, when we rent luxury cars uh, for the CL or any Mercedes, BMW, any luxury car, it's gotta be convertible because, you know, you wanna be seen, it's red, but people wanna be seen a little more. We do know when it turns on, it will turn on and it will drive. Now, V12 to V12, this is gonna take maybe six hours to fix, where this is gonna take six months to fix. That's one of the issues that we're gonna have on the Aston Martin is we may only rent this once. I would say this would rent for $1,000 per day. What? So, let's just 29 say- 29 days and it's paid for. This here, 1,000 per day, if we rented it once, we would make $1,000. Now this here would rent for probably $200 a day. So we need this one to rent at least five times before this one here. Now, that means we need five customers. We don't have five customers for this car. Boom! In your face. So you get to drive an Aventador. With air conditioning. I get a slingshot with nothing. Ed seems to be forgetting that the original exotic car before the Lamborghini Miura and the Aston Martin DB5 was the Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing. But I still wasn't optimistic about my prospects. At least my car was running though, unlike Freddie. You gotta see what's going on here. What happens when you have an electrical fire is a power wire hits a ground and they don't like each other. So they start arcing and eventually they cause a fire. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. It's a big red wire that is completely gone through and everything there is melted. So I think I'm gonna need some, some extra wire, some insulation, and a hope and a prayer. Ho, 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 my chariot awaits. Your trusty steed arrives, sir. Ah, <sighs> fresh out of impound, huh? <laughs> $2.99 a day, it's worth more per day than your car. An upgrade even in losing. It's a shame that Freddie couldn't be here. He does hate these even more than you. The Polaris Slingshot looks a little bit like a transformer that was stuck mid-transform. The engineering is interesting, but it's in a package where nothing really makes sense I got a chance to drive one and everybody is looking at this sad excuse of a human being just driving this car. It was just, it was the most miserable experience I've ever had. I feel like every single Polaris slingshot in the world should have a rent me sign permanently affixed to its front. <laughs> oh yeah. Roadworthy challenge here. <laughs> I guess so. For you? There you go. Oh, that's a key. Oh, For you? Man, yes. All right, guys. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Enjoy the Vegas vacation. We will. Hey. Thank you. I guess that makes you Mr. Papa Giorgio. Oh, you must be lost. This is Mr. Papa Giorgio. His name is not Papa Giorgio. I'm out of the pool. Oh. Let's go. Oh. Tyler's AMG proved that it, yet again, was not a supercar. And that earned him a ride in the world's ugliest big wheel. But of course, in Tyler's always optimistic fashion, he decided to make the best of it. I'm not sure he hit the right pedal there. Oh, this is awful. Awful. 
Man, Tyler looks miserable. Oh my goodness, this thing is lovely. So comfortable. Now the exotic car rental business was very good to me. I ran it for about five years, left college and continued to do it, continued to accumulate cars and just had a ton of fun. And as I see all of the pictures of crashed cars and hear about him having to go get them out of impound, it is definitely a time that I do not miss. But one of the things that the rental industry taught me was maintenance and real cost of ownership. And that's what led to my next step in the automotive business. I became the director of sales at Lamborghini Atlanta. And in fact, I sold a ton of these cars and I do love them. And they made a lot of customers very, very happy. I haven't ever owned an Aventador myself, maybe one day. This is a very different V12 than the Bitterini V12 that came before it that in the Mercies that all of us now have, but it is so much more technological, a much better all-wheel drive system, and it is considerably faster. So this has 740 brake horsepower. The S was just tweaked beyond the regular Aventador, rear wheel steering, a little bit more power, a little bit more torque, a little bit better gearbox programming, different instrumentation, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it is still a big, bad, crazy Lambo. Now the Aventador transmission is an ISR gearbox, which means independent shift rods. And that's different than a double clutch gearbox, but it's also different than like the single clutch paddle shift transmission in my Vanquish. This seems to be a little bit more reliable than most of the single clutch sequential manual paddle shift transmissions that we know and hate. But at the end of the day, there's nothing flashier than a big V12 Lambo. And if you're trying to draw attention here in Las Vegas, you can't do any better than this. <laughs> Look at this guy. Rent for $2.99 a day. I can't even hear what this thing sounds like over Ed's Aventador S, which isn't fair. He's driven dozens of Aventadors. I've never driven one. He's even wrecked one of those before, if I recall correctly. We were in a multi-use turn lane to make a right, and I see this 2001 Chrysler Sebring come barreling across my lane of traffic and I hit the guy just past the rear wheel at probably seven miles per hour. The car must have hit the accelerometer at just the right moment because it fired the airbags in our faces, tensioned the seat belts, fired a charge in the steering column to make it flimsy and loose, rolled down the windows, turned off the radio and adjusted our seats to a position it thought was more safe. Ah! That's the worst transmission ever. How is it in an open cockpit car? I can't see. I have a massive blind spot. Okay. All right. Several lanes. Cross. Oh, the ride's awful too. Oh, and it's hot. It doesn't get any worse. Oh. I purposely avoided driving a slingshot uh, up until this moment. And uh, you can see my judgment was, it was very good. This is, this is awful. Oh my God. Oh no, a stoplight Ned's right next to me. He's gonna wanna race. <laughs> you look like a bit of a tourist. Oh no. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> look at him. How is it? Awful. Yeah. This is the worst thing ever. be the worst car I've ever driven. Is it even a car? What is it? Oh, yeah. Shift! Okie dokie. Just kill me. Just, yep. Oh. oh good, a little bit of shade here. Okay. I think the sunscreen has sweated into my eyes. So now I'm in pain, in addition to being uncomfortable and hot. 
and embarrassed. Oh, can this be over now? Please. As my dream cruise in the Aventador S came to an end, and as Tyler slam dunked his slingshot keys into a nearby trash can, we were both very grateful that we weren't knee deep in the ruins of an Italian electrical fire. All right, I'm gonna try to start it. Here goes nothing. As night fell, with Tyler and I having no intention of going home and helping Freddy, we decided to see what the good people of Las Vegas thought of our cars, taking all proper precautions, of course. Good evening and welcome to Car Trek on the Street. We are here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, and we're going to find out what their fine people think about our depreciated supercars. Are you ready, Tyler? I am ready to watch you do it. I didn't... Are you going to the moon? No, no, I'm, I'm just going out in public, yes. I, what, what, is the, what is this for? Um, I, I don't know, that's where the air comes? Hey, two! Oh, there you go. All right. that was, that now you're ready. Yeah. Okay, well, respect your distances, and I'm going to find some people to ask about our cars. What brings y'all to Las Vegas? We actually live here. Oh, fantastic. So we have these two fairly old exotic cars. That's a 2003 Aston Martin Vanquish. That's a 2005 Mercedes CL65 AMG. If you were to pick to drive one home today, which one would it be? Probably the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin. Yeah. There we go. If you were to guess what the Aston Martin owner does for a living, what do you think it would be? I would say own a business. Own a business. What kind of business? Um, I don't know. Maybe like a tech, like an app, like a tech business, I guess I would say. Maybe an app? Yeah. What about the Mercedes, the CL65? What do you think the owner would do for a living? Ooh, that one's a hard one. Um, I don't know. Like a debt collector? Maybe, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, I don't know because it just doesn't look as good as the Aston Martin, so I don't know like if he has like as a professional job or as a good job, I don't know. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Have a great night. If you were to guess how much these cars were new, how much do you think they were? Uh, about 80000 $80,000 new. Okay, they're a little bit more than that. In fact, new, the Mercedes was 185 grand, and this Aston Martin was $245,000. But they have depreciated a lot since then. Guess what they cost today? 245 new for the Aston. Uh, uh, <laughs> 120? There you go, 120. Actually, it was $29,000. They're pretty unreliable, and very few people want to buy them. Yes, if you had to drive one home today, though, which one would you pick? Silver one. The Aston. <laughs> the Aston Martin. Absolutely. All right, you guys have a great night. Thank you. I would take the Aston, but just my preference off of looks. Same. So they would take the Aston Martin. If you were to guess what the owner of each of these cars does for a living, what would you think? If you had chrome rims on it, then I'd, I'd say a certain type of business. If you had to drive one home tonight, which one would you pick? Probably this Today. one. Uh, this one. A red. He likes the red car, the CL65. Between the red and this one? Yes. I like the sportiest. Oh, like there we go. One. Does it look sportier? Yes. Absolutely sportier. It looks very solid. How about the Mercedes? Do you think it would break all the time? Yes, my girlfriend has a Mercedes and she has problems. All, all the time problems, absolutely. Well, thank you so very much. Have a great night. That was fun. Surely you've had enough self-gratification by now. I would hope that that's enough. Clearly, the people of Las Vegas are very wise, and they prefer my Aston to your lowly Mercedes. Yes, your Aston was a lot more expensive, and mine's, you know, it's a generic-looking car, but it's got it where it counts. It's an AMG V12. Oh, uh, uh, hold on. All right. I've gotten a text from Auto Tempest. For what you spent on your cars, you could have bought reliable transportation with modern features, excellent build quality, and much, much more. Let's see how well your cars can handle abuse. Your destination tomorrow is a dry lake bed where you will meet a series of tasks. I, I'm not sure my car is going to measure up well to a torture test. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good, but uh, then Freddy's left out. We can't have that. Oh, what are we going to do? 
I think you should go on Auto Tempest and buy him a car. Truly negotiate something cheap, just just so he can come along. There's there's no way he's fixing that thing. No, no way. No, uh-huh. it's not coming back. All right, I'll see what I can do. What would be depreciated enough that it'll fit the game, but common enough that there's going to be one close by? <sighs> All right, Auto Tempest. Uh, a few years old, something that's depreciated. Ooh, that's a good idea. All right, let me try that. Here goes nothing. Yes, sir, I'm calling about the car you've got for sale. Yep, that's the one. Does it really have 140,000 miles? Yep, okay. Any lights on the dash? Well, I would expect so, okay, yep. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. All right, records. Has the engine been done? No, okay. How much have you driven it lately? What was the MSRP when it was new? Do you know? Do you have the window sticker? Oh, 104.5. That's pretty strong. Okay, so it's got pretty good options. All right, well, you're asking 16. I, I don't think it gets there, honestly. I mean, it's got issues. The car's pretty much sale proof, but I'm in a pinch. I need something like this, and, I, and quite honestly, I need to do it tonight. So would you be flexible if I could bring cash tonight? It would need to be $9,000. I know you're asking 16, but that's where I really have to be. Thank you, sir. It'll be the easiest deal you've ever had. I'll see you in a few minutes with some cash. Ah, looks like we just got Freddie a car. Next time on Car Trek. So we have a little surprise for you. <laughs> Auto Tempest has brought us to this dry lake bed for a series of tests. Ah! Sometimes a little shake can cure what ails you. Ah, 4,200 pounds of car. He's scared of the dust. <laughs> chicken now. Let's try it. Medium rare is exactly how I like my chicken. Next time on Car Trek, we'll be testing our depreciated supercars, build quality and speed. But Auto Tempest is all about quality and speed. They let you filter your results through their powerful search engine that combines things from all the top listing sites. Click the link below to find your next ride. AutoTempest.com, all the cars, one search.